Okay. So out in the universe, in our own galaxy and in other galaxies that we observe in like large massive galactic clusters, it looks like there's some new kind of matter that doesn't interact in the way that regular matter interacts. So there's this sort of famous observation of these two galactic clusters colliding out there in the universe, and it's called the Bullet Cluster. Um, and what this looks like are like these two clusters of galaxies that have smashed into each other and passed by. And we can see um, all of the stars and galaxies that make up these two clusters. We can see the hot gas that's emitting x-rays in these clusters, and we can map out the mass um, of the hot gas and of the stars using something called gravitational lensing. But the strange thing is that most of the mass of these two clusters isn't hot x-ray gas and isn't a star or a galaxy, but it's something massive that's completely invisible. Ordinary matter is the stuff that makes up us, the air, uh, you know, all of the things around us, the stars, um, it's like atoms and elements, so protons, electrons, neutrons, stuff like that. We think that the universe is 5% ordinary matter and 26% dark matter. And the rest of it is something called dark energy, which I don't necessarily need to go into. Um, but yeah, so the vast majority of matter in the universe is something that we can't see, that we can't touch, that just interacts via gravity, and that we can only see via gravitational effects. Uh, if it's possible that dark matter is a particle, it could have been produced back when the universe was very small and very hot and very dense. Um, one of the theories is that it could have been produced via interactions with standard model particles when the universe was very small, very hot, and very dense. And then as the universe cooled and expanded, dark matter froze out. But if this is true, it's possible that, you know, at the LHC, in our conditions where by smashing protons together, we're creating an environment like the early universe where things are small and hot and dense, uh, it's possible that we could produce dark matter in proton-proton collisions. So dark matter searches at Atlas are really interesting because it's just one of many different ways to look for dark matter. Um, it's not just that you can possibly produce it at the LHC, but if dark matter interacts with the standard model, even just very, very weakly, it's possible that the dark matter in the universe is scattering off of particles here on Earth. Um, so some people look for dark matter that way. Um, it's possible that dark matter out, out there in the dark galaxy um, are annihilating into standard model particles. So there are some telescope projects that look for dark matter that way. And the LHC is just one piece of the puzzle to look for dark matter. We know that dark matter exists. We can see direct evidence of it, like clear concrete evidence that it exists in like in phenomena like the bullet cluster and in phenomena like galactic rotation curves. We know that it's out there. We know that it's there. So why not look for it at the LHC? Uh, what would a discovery of dark matter at the LHC mean for physics? That would be so great. I'd be so pleased. Um, what would it mean for physics? It means that there's potentially like a whole new sector of, of physics to explore, like a whole new particle or possibly a whole new um, set of particles would have been found and there would be so much to measure and so much to learn about dark matter. Being able to like measure very specific aspects about dark matter will tell us so much about the early universe um, and about how the universe was formed. It would be really great. That would be really cool. Oh my god.